Combines are already making passes in certain portions of Nebraska. Corn has advanced rapidly throughout the growing season, but drought conditions may have also fostered the risk of aflatoxin. We talked about that concern this week with Mike Carlson and Tamara jackson Zims. Well, at this point, of course, we haven't harvested but a very small percentage of corn in Nebraska. And in those areas, it's particularly from fields that are not irrigated, so have experienced a lot more drought injury than most others. I just want to say that up front. And at this point, it is a small percentage of samples that have tested high with concerning levels or concentrations of aflatoxin at this point, less than 10% at this point. What's a high level? What do you consider high? Uh, for me, that was anything over 20 parts per billion. And so uh, those ranged in concentrations up to 200 or more. How can farmers scout their fields to find out if they have it? And how do you tell it apart from other molds? Well, I recommend if you have fields that are at high risk, and I consider fields at high risk if they've got drought injury, and especially if they have ear feeding insect injury. The damage can allow a fungal infection and promote the accumulation of some of the mycotoxins like aflatoxin. And so if they scout the fields that are at high risk and husk back several ears, they should be looking for an olive green mold or they'll see the spores. They look dusty on the surface of those kernels that are usually damaged. Is it a sample that you need to send in or is it something you can diagnose on farm? Well, most people are probably not going to feel comfortable diagnosing it and they're probably going to need to send in a sample for diagnosis and possibly even for mycotoxin analysis. We'll get into the livestock side with Mike here in, in just a second, but storage on farm, uh, what recommendations for storing in bins? Well, in general, for any of our ear rot diseases, we don't recommend storing grain that has got that, those diseases because even under the best storage conditions, you can only expect it to probably get worse in the bin and have even more problems when they do pull it out to sell it later on. Let's talk about selling. Mike will bring you in here. Uh, selling to elevators, it's illegal to blend this in, correct? That's right, and the concentration that uh, can be used for various livestock depends upon the species and what the animals to be used for. For example, for dairy cattle, if you're going to feed it to dairy cattle, the concentration can be no more than 20 parts per billion. If you're going to feed it to finishing or feedlot cattle, then the concentration is increased to 300 parts per billion. Uh, but it is illegal under federal regulations to blend contaminated grain down to a concentration that is tolerable. Uh, that If you want to use it on farm, you can but to blend it and sell it to somebody else, particularly across state lines, is illegal under our regulations. How does it affect the animal? What's the concern there? And specifically, I guess we could look at all the animals, but overall, what's the, the effect that it has? Aflatoxin is a liver poison. Uh, if it's present in high enough concentration, it damages the liver and can threaten the life of the animal. A more chronic exposure uh, depends a little bit on the species. It's been associated with immunosuppression, so it can increase the risk of infectious disease. Uh, performance issues, they don't uh, do as well. And then in humans, it is a very potent liver cancer causing agent, and that's why it's regulated in uh, the human food chain also. For farmers that might try to get away with blending this in to a higher level, uh, how can they get caught down the road? Is um, there a way? Truthfully, it would probably be very difficult to mm -hmm. catch them. I, I couldn't speculate on that. My recommendation is don't just don't do it, don't run that risk. For dairy cows, can you find it within the milk that they sell? Yes, uh, if the animal does consume contaminated grain, it can appear in the milk. Oh, the literature says 12-ish hours later, and uh, aflatoxin M1 is regulated in milk. Anything above a half a part per billion in milk cannot be sold. So uh, dairy farmers should have their corn checked. If they're buying 2012 corn, they should have it checked for aflatoxin before they purchase it to make certain they don't get caught after the fact with violative concentrations in milk. You can find more information on aflatoxin, including NEB guides, on the CropWatch website.